Hello, how are we? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Here we are. Let's see what you have prepared for me. Today, Mr. David Blues, what do you bring me today? Well, well, one more video. I'm super happy to be here with you, to be able to analyze these types of videos and the truth is that today I have a series of videos for you that are all heading in the same direction. And it's because I've seen and I've been seeing for a while now a lot of negativity on a topic that we're going to see next. So without further ado I'll play it and let's analyze what. Let's see. And where do you live? I'm up towards the cavalry. The hills. Lind. You are the true leader of the pack. His mother. Look. And is it? Do they have a name? Of course. A Keiko. <coughs> this is the one who has a good time. Dogs are like Diogenes. He's the Diogenes of the 21st century. Hey, can I help you with the croquettes? No, because there are a lot of them. And... I have 60. 60 dogs? Yeah. No way. Look, and they're well controlled, okay? Yeah, we already saw the street, Karn. Yeah, do you remember that we saw them here last time too when we gave you some wool? Yeah, you remember. Yeah, I already remembered. Yeah, well, every time. We see you, we're going to give you a hand. Recognize the truck and when you see the truck, come over right away. No, no, no. Because it seems that they do eat well. No. They don't have to eat right now. I already told him to eat. I don't think he's coming. Yeah. Hey, but have some tacos. You because you're thinner than the dogs. I went out for my lunch. Come on, come on. A kilo of chicken. Come on. And once again we see here the true leader of the... How about these two videos? As I was saying, there's a lot of negativity with the concept that there's no leader of the pack. So, let's see, I've posted two videos where clearly, if we remove the prejudices of how the person dresses or not, the worst ones are really calm. You can see that they are controlled, but what you don't see is any kind of order, you don't see any kind of nervousness. In the second video we see how the man approaches the car, the dogs stay there calmly, without needing to give him any kind of command. He comes, he speaks, he leaves, the dogs are there. So, Borja, you who have defended and we really believe that there is a hierarchical order. What do you have to say about it? That this man bought my documentary and realized the story. Of course. <laughs> what a bastard. What you should do, buy the documentary so you can see that. What we have seen is reflected in the documentary. What this man does, the power of initiative, the power of persuasion and the living nature of feeling the animals, talking to them and getting into their real world. Because he is primitive and approaches the dogs without any kind of denaturation. He lives with his animals, as I do, and they know that he is the organizer of the system and a body in motion with initiative attracts the masses. Well, hierarchical order that to understand it you have to study it. What you can't do is talk without knowing because it seems that people mix it up almost with politics, right? As if it were the patriarchy, right? The hierarchical order creates stability within the pack, no more, no less. Each one has a function, each one has a command post. E.H., as simple as there is a wonderful group between humans and dogs. And the human, this gentleman, who seems so convinced that you can see that he loves his animals in the most true way possible. As simple as that he is the architect of the system and he is so convinced because he is out of comfort and only has one thought.
Guys, let's go. We make a wonderful group, humans and dogs, since time immemorial, since ancient times, I would say since the Neolithic. And here we can see it, without any kind of training, without any kind of definitive functionality, without breaking the soul of the dogs. This gentleman is the true leader of the pack and surely he doesn't hit, or yell or anything. He is the organizer, the organizer of the system. No more, no less. No more, no less. And it is something natural, beautiful. And it is something natural, something organic. It is what it should be. And there you are respecting, of course. The mind of this gentleman, the mind of this gentleman is focused on his animals and he sets the path and everyone follows him because evidently there is a social structure and he is the organizer of the pack. Period. But he doesn't have to say anything. He goes alone. It's normal. He comes out alone. Dot. That's why we always say this phrase, the dog doesn't know what you think, he feels what you think. Yes, yes, it's more than accurate. It's more than accurate. Also, I think that people who deny so much that there is a natural hierarchical order, which is to deny the obvious and what is natural, don't. Understand it. It's because first, they don't understand it. Second, they see the figure of the leader or alpha as something very EH imposing. And it's not imposition, it's simply knowing how to understand and communicate in a natural and calm way. That in the end we can say once again what the typical characteristics of a leader are, but we're not going to do it. I think we already have videos apart from the variants, we've already said the most repeated ones. Oh, we're not going to go into that. It's simply that being the leader is being the person in whom the other members of the group trust. There's nothing more. It's the reference like the father and mother with their puppy. E.H., we would say that the leader of the pack, he is the mother. We always say that, it, is always the exactly. So, E.H. But why? But why? Of course. Why the mother? Why? What what does the mother emanate that the father does not? The mother has to be strong when the puppies are born, the lioness, the bear, the she-wolf. She is protecting her offspring. She is protecting her offspring. And those who continue to affirm that the dog is no longer an animal, right? Yes. Wild or a primitive or primitive animal well this man this man is the most primitive there is a guy walking with his pack without loose collars everyone follows him everyone waits i mean there is a fantastic telepathy in this video between humans and dogs it is what i teach people what we teach what i like the most there is a control figure and everyone trusts him period it's primitive he's out of comfort he feels the let's go guys and that's it that's what he feels as you can see Frank in the videos on his channel how all the animals follow him. It's practically the same. Fran, we'll make a video with him, E.H., yes, yes. We have to analyze it because it's the same. So, I'm not a food dispenser, I'm an administrator and clearly they follow me because I'm the one who gives you the food in the end. Well, E.H., it's all natural, it's just that there's no need to give it so many turns. So, what you can't pretend is to try to EH tell the world that dogs EH are like robots with hair. I can't understand it. As if it were a living doll, a living toy that we can subdue by giving commands and creating a constant operant conditioning that is totally unnatural. That is why you have to keep repeating to the animal for a long time, E-H. One word plus one stimulus. One stimulus plus one word. In the end it doesn't matter. Everything is mixed, E-H. So that the dog has a false feeling of control. The dog is still a dog and the canine is still a canine. No matter how much some people want to paint something that doesn't exist. The dog is a dog and that's it. And there is a temperament from birth in all litters. And that's it.
and the primary genetic memory is the calico. Then we could debate if one is like this or like that, which is not true either, because as we always say, I have a Malinoa as a puppy and I don't teach him anything and he will be super well controlled because what you have to do is learn like this man does. Okay, you give this man a Malinoa and he doesn't care, he would do the same. So, what you have to learn to do is to hold on differently from the most dominant dogs, because the dominant one will exert more resistance, but the dominant one doesn't mean that he will bite you, it may be that you want to be more independent. There are many variants, so what you have to learn is to retain the instinct in the most organic way possible. And that is what we teach. Exactly, and... You said something interesting. And you said something very interesting, which is that these two gentlemen do not see their dogs by breed, nor do they see them as something mechanical, let's say, like a robot, as you said. I ask the people who are watching this video, how do they think these people see their dogs? Leave it in the comments, leave it for us. Leave it for us in the comments. How do they think these people see their dogs? What feelings do they have towards them? I'll leave it there. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how the answers go. I think it is a super magical relationship. It is about cooperation. Cooperation, something that lately there is little cooperation among human beings. Sadly, we all go our own way and it doesn't matter where it is, one side or the other. In the end, everyone falls. Yes, well, society in the liquid society, right? What do you call it? Society is changing, happening. We will also make some sociological and anthropological videos. Anthropology because you had to understand the human being in order to be able to say to him, you have to be part of the pack and you have to be the pack leader, not be a jerk there with a leash. I lead the dogs, I don't let them fight, that is. I try to create a fantastic harmony because animals often resolve conflicts. Sometimes yes. Other times not, depending on their temperaments, by biting because they are animals and their way of saying, hey, I dominate you. Sometimes they don't and sometimes they do. I mean, it's not always no or always yes. The pendulum of the variant. Is that here there is a very, very interesting thing, which is that of course, the best state or the state that we associate most with happiness is the state of calm. But for calm to occur there has to be chaos and it is something natural and we talked about this once we started to philosophize and it is very curious and at the same time very, very natural too, right? Because after the storm comes the calm, but let's... See, it's like a cycle that is always there, I mean, it's like yin and yang, right? EH, so it's the same with dogs, they might explode, there's a conflict, but then there's a moment of calm. So, we can't expect everything to be peace and love and this to be a Walt Disney movie and everything to be perfect. There are always moments when there will be that little bit of chaos. The only thing we as a point of reference have to set the limits. True or not, what do you think? This is my opinion, but let's see, but depending on the context, the first thing you have to understand is that dogs live in the moment and that's what's so hard to understand. Dogs live in the moment. That's why there's entropy and then stability. E.H., when can they get more nervous? Well, yes, I don't know, if you're walking and maybe you find yourself in a house with more dogs, they will surely bark, warn you depending on where they sleep, because dogs have been sentinels warning you since time immemorial. That's why they're going to bark at the door when there's no control figure. Dogs are sentinels, even. But it's normal for them to do it. It's normal. It's not, the dog has a behavior problem because you've given it a door. No, no. The behavior problem is yours because you don't understand that this is an animal and it's a sentinel according to its temperament and according to what you transmit to it. When it hears a sound outside it's going to say, don't come in here because they're territorial. That's why I don't know what some professionals in the sector want to paint about the dog not being a canine being, it's that the dog barks at the door.
whether it has a control figure or not, I'm the one who tells it, move away, the door is mine. Let's see who's coming. What we should really do is go and bark at the door. The dog says, why don't you come and bark at the door? Of course, that's what we should do or because we're human, because we know that the neighbor, the mailman, is coming. Of course, when he barks, what's going on? Of course, what's going on when he barks? Well, he's warning the intruder. Hey, this territory is already taken. Go on, go on. Point, point, there's nothing more than that, there's no more explanation. Come on, what's going on here? Okay, go on, calm down, let's go. That's it, it's over, I'll take it out there and that's it. But to know that, you have to show the dog that I have control of my mind and that's what this man has. This man, as he's out of comfort, doesn't hesitate. He's thinking, let's see, this man lives in the moment like dogs. I'm hungry, I'm going to eat there. I'm hungry, I'm walking to the place where they feed me. And he only thinks about walk to the place where they feed him. So, the dogs see overwhelming initiative and he communicates with the dogs, as I say in the dogagurso, with the power of intention, with the power of no doubt and with the power of our intrinsic conviction. And it is wonderful when you realize that and we can see these dogs looking at him in the most similar way to how my dogs look at me. Because when you treat dogs super organically, you realize that EH they look at you waiting EH where are we going, boss. Call him boss, call him. Captain of the ship, call him the conductor of the orchestra, call him whatever you want, but let's not mix politics with patriarchy because yes the leader is the bad guy. The oppressor, EH. In all social species. I don't know, I don't know who I voted for, but please stop it already. Hey, it is that they think everything. That is why, please. It is crazy, but it is like that. That's how it is, that's how it is. Sadly, dogs are still dogs. Let's not overthink things. Simple, the simpler it is, the more you see. It's so easy and so simple that we don't see it because we are obsessed with the current of training, of functional intelligence of cognitive operant and I can apply cognitive operant, but with my body, not with exogenous, external things, with protein stimulus. I am what they want and desire. Why? Because I am so convinced that dogs follow me to the ends of the earth. It is based on being convinced of what you do, but for that, to understand it, you have to feel it, experience it. But if we spend all our time doing the training, we are going to totally displace the adaptive instinctive intelligence. Well, EH, because the current is always the same. So, from here we make the call for natural training. Of course we are training the dog, but with immense beauty with our body, with our way of feeling them. We are connected to them and they to us in a totally organic way, without any doubt there are foods that are clear, but I am not a dispenser, I am an administrator. There is no more to say, it is so easy that you cannot see it. But you can see it, you just have to want to see it. Look. This man is not a dog trainer. This man leads his flock, as he could lead sheep, goats, cows or dogs. Yes, yes, no, there is no more, there is no more. Well, for me the issue, you know, personally the issue of training is that I do not like to say it and I say it to clients, but for me they are friends too. I am a guide, I guide people on how to relate to their dogs and how to create a bond. I do not like training, I do not like it, it grates on me, I am sorry. G sounds. It is not very acidic. <laughs> EH, well, I think that to finish it would be good that one day some of these deniers of the order. <laughs> of the hierarchical order, nature. Please, please, let's have a debate. Yes, let's have a debate here. Or do a live and comment and we're doing it. Yes, yes.
whoever is up for it, then. Istas de la natura, but let's see, deniers of nature, we know who Palov is, who Skimmer is, that I have done such you, Mondor, Ipo Gekor, Suchin 1, Suchin 2, Suchin 3, when you were in Suchin 3, that we knew Miguel de las Isas Rottweiler, with Jose Antonio Ballesteros, with his blue Doberman and with Pascal Gatto in 1995. All the haters think is that I have been the trainers of the host. The first Malanoa that arrived in Spain with Pascal Gatto, who nobody even knew who the dog was. I was already putting my sleeve on when I was 16. So we know what cognitive operant is and with Nacho Sierra with everyone and we know what functional operant training is, civil, sporting. Then there is a moment when I say to see more I have to stop training dogs and sit down with a cup of coffee and constantly observe. Hey, then there was the Gekor test, the Aport, the Revere and all these stories, the attack and defense. Come on, come on, boar. Yes, every now and then you have to. Come out and hear the dogs. Yes. Let's. See? Now I tell you that nothing that we claim that the more natural everything is, the better for the dog and the more real bond you will have. But above all you will observe more because if we only stay in training, which is? Very little, it is always the same, you will think that the years forward and anxiety is happiness and you will be. True. Biased and you will not see the true mind of the animal. So, the less training, the more you will know their instinctive intelligence. And also and not only observe, but... Feel, because when you go with your animal next to you and that is that is that well first you have to have a specific emotionality so that they see you as such. But when you start to feel certain things and you start to control them, a magic is created that and sometimes without even having to speak, they already understand you. They already understand you. You already know what you want. And that is difficult, but this is. The dog is going to associate your constant mood because it has 500 million olfactory receptors and you can feel and hear the wavelength. Look, it is hitting me like I am here and the food. Wait, now we are going. So in the end the dog is like a 15-month-old baby. I mean, the dog, the dogs are conditioned by what we are going to do all the time. And they manipulate you and they hit you, we are going to do this, we are going to do this. That's why everything is based on controlling ourselves. Everything is based on not getting irritated, on not creating entropy, on a madness of cytokines in our mind, in our body, and knowing how to control. Come on, come on, knowing how to control, in the end you have to control the neurotransmitters, which is what makes the dog accept you so much, which is what, well, whoever doesn't believe it, is missing out. No, no. But obviously the dog is also there, your documentary is there, EH, people who want it. Well, they can buy it, they can watch it. Many people won't fully understand it, yes or many, I know, because. There are many people who don't, there are many people who won't understand the documentary, many people. But well, I. Totally agree. But well, we are always within reach, we are not untouchable, we are people. We are there, damn. Ask, hey, eh, such, hum, I haven't understood this. Can you explain it to me and we'll talk. It's that people believe, for example, especially with you, that you are untouchable, right? That you are there, that you are a person and also super close. Well, normal, yes. The problem of having come out of television is that you seem inaccessible and this is sometimes a problem. Well, what can I say? Hey, here we are normal flesh and blood. We have studied dogs for many years, eh. We have done training, we have done tracking, we have done world, we have done attack. We know everything. But the most beautiful thing was to get into their true mind, not give it, to attribute abstract anthropomorphic qualities to it and, eh, learn to feel the dogs and and teach the dogs who you are in their role, in their place within the pack. The leader of the pack is not the bad guy, 
He is the one who has the initiative and they need to know who they have to follow. To be also controlled, because ultimately what we want is the control of the animal and we do it in the most organic, most natural and most beautiful way possible, obviously, without hitting, without shouting and without. Porja. Putting them in their true mind. You're a genius. <laughs> yes, sorry. We're going to stop here. The come on, come on is coming to an end. Dot, let's cut it short. You're cutting it now. Let's cut it here because people like it short and clear and if you want to see more we'll upload another video soon. So, since we like it short and I'll tell you, look for the easy trick. If you love your dog, learn what you think. Bye. Bye.